Here are seven things I wish I knew five years ago about editing pictures in Final Cut Pro that will speed up my workflow and boost my production value. Not only is editing photos in Final Cut Pro possible, but many times it's preferable to other programs like Adobe Photoshop because it's so fast and packed with effects, perfect for image editing. Plus you don't have to buy any more software. In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn Final Cut Pro into a powerful photo editing tool that can rival Photoshop and take this photo from meh to cool. So let's turn Final Cut Pro into Photoshop. All right, the first step is to add our picture to Final Cut Pro. Go to your Final Cut Pro and right click on the library and select new event or just press option N. Give your event a name and make sure create new a project is enabled. If you see this button that says use custom settings, then you're good to go. If you see this with use automatic settings at the bottom, click on automatic settings so that you have a window like so, and then press OK. There's a couple different ways you can import pictures into Final Cut Pro. For this first method, I'm going to use the built-in Photos browser. So go to the Photos and Audio, and then select your Photos library. And I've got mine set up for favorites, and find the picture you want to import. Here's the one I want. So I can drag and drop this into my clip, or I can select it and press E to add it to my timeline. Once you add it, you'll get this message here about the video properties aren't standard. That's okay. It's what this is trying to do is figure out what kind of video are you making, what size, resolution, that kind of thing. So under video format, set it to custom. And you'll notice the resolution changes. That's because the resolution is matching the resolution of our image. Next, press enter or push OK. The first thing you can do is make your image bigger or smaller. In the viewer, right click and select transform. You'll see these blue handles or these blue dots at the corners and on the sides. That's for adjusting the size. And then this middle on-screen control is for the position and rotation. Let me show you. First, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so I can see things better. If I click and drag on any corner handle, it will adjust the size and it will maintain the aspect ratio. If I click and drag on a side or top handle, the image will squish or stretch. I like the composition of my picture, so I'm not going to change anything here. I'll press reset and then done. And then I'll press shift Z to zoom back in. The first change I wanna make is to the shirt. I want a different color. So the first step is to duplicate the layer. Hold down Option and then click and drag the clip upwards to make a new copy. Disable the bottom clip by selecting it and pressing V. Select the top clip. Now let's mask out the shirt so that we only change the color of the shirt. Go to Effects and then go to the Mask section and drag and drop Draw Mask onto the top clip. Now we can start adding control points, but before I do that I want to zoom in and get a better look. I'll click up here in the upper right of the viewer and I'll select 100%. I can use this little red box inside of another box to move my view around. Okay, that's a good spot. Let's start adding control points. I just click and add control points all the way around my subject. This takes a little while, so I'll speed this part up. To make a curved line, click and drag your control point and then to finish the mask, just click on the first control point you made. Let's soften up the edges of the mask just a little bit. Click on the inspector button up here to show your inspector and go to the video inspector and locate the draw mask effect. I'm just gonna increase the feather, probably about three, maybe five, not a lot. That'll just soften it up a little bit. Okay, that's a good looking mask. Next, let's desaturate it. Go to the color inspector and and click on the saturation tab. Take the global saturation all the way down to the bottom. That's basically making a black and white version. Next, go down to the colors category of the effects and add colorize to the top clip. Then go back to the video inspector and you'll see this new effect here. And what it does is it remaps anything that's black to this color and anything that's white to this color. Let's change that up a little bit. I'm gonna go over here to kind of a kind of a green for that, for matte, for the black part or the shadows, and then the light parts, I'm gonna go to this kind of greenish yellow right there. 
Okay, now select the bottom clip and reactivate it by pressing V, and we've got a green shirt on top. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna zoom my viewer out by clicking on the viewer and then pressing Shift Z to see everything at once. Now let's add some clouds up here into this area. I know it's gonna cover up this beautiful canyon, but uh, this will be fun to composite some clouds on top of it. I'm going to add them through Finder, but first we need some clouds. I really like this website called pexels.com. It's free stock photos and videos and they're royalty free. So you can search for whatever you want so let's search for clouds. I want something with a contrasting background like uh, this one right here, blue sky and the white clouds. So I'll just download this, then let's add it in Finder. So I'll pull up Finder and I'll just simply drag and drop my image into my timeline. With the cloud selected, go to the inspector and change spatial conform type from fit to none. That way it doesn't change the size of the clouds to fit into this video project. It didn't make a big difference, but now we're working with the original file size. Okay, let's remove the sky. In the effects, go down to keying category and drag and drop the keyer onto your clouds. Boom, immediately the clouds are gone. It looks pretty good, but we need to do some tweaking. The clouds are kind of dark looking here with some shadows, but this is a very sunny day, and so it doesn't quite fit yet. In the video inspector, change the blend mode to screen, that looks better. And then let's drop the opacity to about 95. Good, right click in the viewer, select transform, and let's move these clouds up here more into the sky area. And let's make it bigger by dragging the corners. And I wanna add a little bit of rotation to it as well, like so and just adjust the positioning. Okay, that looks pretty good. The only problem is we've got these clouds down here. That's easy. Click done, and then in the inspector, go to the crop section, and let's crop the bottom off by adjusting this slider until we get those bottom clouds gone. There we go. All right, now let's add a title to this picture. Go to the titles browser, go to the build in and out section, and select custom and drag and drop it onto your image. Double click on the text in the viewer and add your own words. That will also open up this text inspector over here where we can change the text, the font, the size, the color, and so much more. I'm gonna change the font to high tide. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger and I'm gonna set my alignment to the left. I can use these on-screen controls right here, this little dot or this circle to move it around. Now I'll press escape and then I'll select it or click once on the text so that I have it selected. And now I'm gonna change the color, but I don't have to worry about the highlighted text getting in the way. Scroll down to the bottom and under face, you'll find the color. Let's try kind of a, a yellowish color there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Are you digging this video? Are you ready to Photoshop in Final Cut? If this has been helpful, will you please hit that like button? Thanks. And in just a bit, I'll show you how to add some cool effects to give this pic a high gloss finish. Now let's add some effects. But first, we need to turn this into a compound clip. Click and drag to select all the layers and then turn it into a compound clip. Press Option G, give your clip a name, and press Enter or click OK. Now we have this one clip that we can add effects to and it will apply that to all of the layers underneath. First thing I wanna do is color grade this a little bit. I wanna add some warmth to it. So go to the color inspector and click on the color tab and use this global parameter to add some warmth to it. Don't go too crazy like this, <laughs> but I'm just gonna add a little bit of warmth, some of this yellowish red tint to it. Next, I wanna add a cool prism effect. Go to the blur category and drag and drop prism onto your picture. This is way too much, so let's go to the inspector and turn it down to about, probably about a three, maybe a four. Okay, but I don't want it to apply to my son here. I want it to just happen on the area on the outside. So I'll click on this mask button up here and I'll add a shape mask. Then I'll click this down arrow and I'll say invert the shape mask. So now anything inside this mask will not have the prism effect and anything on the outside will have it. I can adjust the position of it and the size. This outside ring is the transition from no effect to the prism effect. So I'll just have a gradual change. If you wanna turn off the mask 
on-screen controls, just click this button right here and it will turn it off. And if you still see some on-screen controls like this, command click twice on Prism and it will deselect the effect so that you can see the image as is. That looks pretty good. My boy is in focus and then we have this kind of cool offset blur happening to the rest of the picture. Now let's add some film grain. Go down to the stylized section of the effects and scroll down to film grain, drag and drop that onto your clip. And in the inspector, change style to realistic. And let's put a mount down to around 40 or 50, somewhere in there. Not too much, but just enough to give it some life. All right, one last effect. Scroll down to the very bottom and add vignette. Vignette adds a darkened area around the photo. So this is a little too dark. So I'm going to drag the middle ring up until we get kind of close to the edges here. And what this does is it will draw the viewer's attention into the center where our subject is. And then I'm gonna drag this just out so that we don't have any dark corners like this on my vignette. I'm just gonna drag this out a little bit and adjust the end. Okay, then it just adds kind of some darkness to the corners and the edges. All right, that looks pretty good. So here's our picture before and then our picture after. We've composited clouds on top, we changed the t-shirt color, we added some text, and then we added a bunch of effects to give it a really nice look. A lot of people don't know this, but Final Cut Pro has some really great features for photo editing that are just often overlooked. Now that you've learned how to edit pictures in Final Cut Pro, you may find this video helpful. It's called How to Make a Slideshow in Final Cut Pro, and I show two ways to make an automatic slideshow. Click here to check it out.